Founders, and uh, today I'm going to um, share with you the project that I'm going to work on here. Um, it's I title it Teaching and Learning of Early Literacy in Young Children in uh, Chile and the U.S. And uh, it's a collaboration between Fulbright, that's why I'm here, and University of Colorado Denver in Universidad de los Andes, la Escuela de Educación, por la Facultad de Educación. First of all, I want to thank you for being here. It's so exciting to finally get to meet you all. And uh, thank you for you know the opportunity to be here in Chile. So, um, okay, so let's go to the next one. So just a little bit about me. As I said, I'm Associate Professor of Early Childhood Education in the University of Colorado Denver, and I'm interested in uh, young children I'm talking about birth through five, and that are exposed to another language. Uh, so they're bilingual or they're experiencing uh, the life of being in two worlds, really. Um, and uh, I'm interested in how they learn. And here in, in Chile, I'm not going to study bilinguals. I'm going to study monolinguals. But I'm interested in children who are learning Spanish in the United States. So I think it, this is going to help me understand the children in the United States as well as here in Chile. So a little bit about myself um, personally. Uh, let's see if this works. I am from Maracaibo, Venezuela. So let's see. <laughs> this, just so you know where that is. The internet is not going so well. But Venezuela, just if you don't know your geography, it's on the northern part of uh, South America. And I am, oh, it doesn't come up. OK. Oops. OK. So Maracaibo is here. It's on uh, Lake Maracaibo, which is uh, very rich in oil. And we are kind of like the Texans of <laughs> Venezuela. We are loud, we speak differently, we're very friendly. We are, uh, I'm not sure about political affiliation, but we are very, you know, very open to different things. And now, how would I go back? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. No, 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 I wanted to be fancy in the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, from there, uh, when I, I was born there, when I was a little girl, I moved, my parents took me to, you, you will have to come back, I think. Yeah. <laughs> okay, to Buenos Aires, uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina. And I lived there for 11 years, and then I went back to Venezuela and there I stayed until I did my college uh, um, studies there. And then I moved to Urbana-Champaign to University of Illinois to do my master's and my doctorate. And then from there, I moved around the United States many places to North Carolina among them. <laughs> and I got a job at the University of Colorado Denver. That's where I am now, and this is a picture from my house a few days ago. <laughs> um, okay, so what I'm going to do here, as you know, our program is, um, is a program that combines teaching and uh, research. So I am going to teach some classes. I ask them not to teach a whole course. <laughs> But at some classes in early literacy, in a class that is in early literacy in the program of Educación Parvularia, that's how they call it here. Um, and I'm interested in learning more about teacher preparation here in Chile. And Chile has a long tradition of teacher preparation in early childhood. Unlike the United States, teachers here, early childhood teachers here, have to have a college degree. United States, they only require two college courses to be a teacher educator. So I think I'm going to learn a lot about teacher preparation and a lot, you know, and I can share what we do in the United States in relation with that. Also, there's a lot of interest lately in early childhood education. We finally um, realized the importance of young children. So. I was very impressed that Presidente Piñera, when his inauguration speech, 
talked about early childhood education. I was very surprised that in 2018 about this. And as you know, you might know, uh, President Biden has wants to pr uh, propose the Build Back Better, and uh, that includes universal preschool. And we will need a lot of teachers to work on those classrooms if that ever passes. So, um, you know, we, I think we, I want to learn more about how you do this, okay? Um, in terms of uh, research, uh, I am already working with my colleague, Francisca Valenzuela, in a, a critical review of early literacy in Spanish-speaking children. And that is, uh, we, are, we have already done some, some preliminary work with this, and I'm trying to, I, we will try to finish it before I leave. And we are interested in how monolingual Spanish-speaking children learn about literacy. And then I'm going to work here, while I'm here, in a study on uh, alphabet knowledge in children and children, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that. And then the other thing uh, that I'm going to do is to work. They asked me, they have collected some data on early literacy here. And my colleagues, Francisca and Belusa, are wanting to collaborate with them to analyze that data and write some manuscript. So now in terms of the uh, alphabet knowledge study, um, there has been some studies in the United States and English-speaking countries about how children learn the letters. That's what alphabet knowledge is, right? Very different to all the things that you do. <laughs> um, there's a lot about how to teach them. You know, there's all kinds of, you have young children, you might have experience, uh, you know, the letter people, the Sioux phonics, all these kinds of different curricula, but very few studies on how children actually learn them. What are the developmental patterns of how they learn letters? And so in English-speaking children, we know a little bit more. Uh, but, um, and you, Felice, maybe you're interested. They don't look into context, OK? Mm. They just uh, you know, study what the child might know, but they don't try to explain why they know this. Um, so I'm interested in looking at Spanish-speaking children, and I, I wonder if the, how the, the context in which these children participate might influence the way they learn these letters, right? So I'm not only going to study how children learn the letters and the developmental patterns that are, but I'm also looking at the context in which they are. So, for doing that, I want to explore their classroom environment, and also I want to explore what the parents do. So how many of you have young children? Not in, not in, <laughs> or oh, you had I young children. children. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there are some practices that, um, uh, for example, uh, parents do in the United States, like, for example, they teach the children the ABC song, right? That's a frequent practice. That is not something the people in Latin American countries do. We don't have a ABC song, mm -hmm. right? So they have found that in English-speaking children, they learn the ABCs first in the alphabet. Is that something we find here in Chile? I'm not sure. And so that's what I'm, I'm going to explore. So in terms of the method, I'm going to um, interview 54-year-olds and 55-year-olds. Um, I'm hoping that my students in, <laughs> in uh, Universidad de los Andes are going to help me with this. Are these big numbers for you? Or no? for you, probably not, right? <laughs> these are just little things. Um, yeah, I'm good, because with young children, you have to be, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really interesting. Uh, data collection process. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to observe some classrooms um, and do some ethnography there. And uh, then I'm going to interview at least 25 parents. I'm going to probably do this on the phone or in Zoom because I, I doubt I can go to their classrooms given that their homes into. So that's it. I don't know if you have some questions. 
So since you oh. indirectly <laughs> brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> 